There are some people today that feel like they are in a place where they do not know whether they are going to get out of. You may be at the corner. You may have been pushed to the wall. But God is able to turn that situation around for you. God is able, I say. God is more than able. God has got the power. He's got the ability. And he has the willingness. If you call on God, if you invite God into your situation, if you call upon God, God is able and he is willing to turn your situation around for you. There's a lady here in Luke's Gospel, chapter number 7. I want us to consider scripture Beginning verse number 11 says, And it came to pass the day after, that is the day after Jesus had healed the centurion's servant. On that day after, that he went into a city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city of Nain, behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city were with her. Now here is indeed a very sad situation of a widow whose only son had passed on. Now, again, the unfortunate thing is uh, this city name, the name Nain, or the term, this name of the city, Nain, means beauty, pleasant. Now, here is a woman, a widow, in a beautiful city or town, a town of pleasantness, but she herself was not feeling that beauty or pleasantness. Things had gone south for her. Her only hope in life, and indeed in her old age, had been cut off. She had now no one that she would or she could look upon to help her when she grows old. When she gets old, her only hope, and she has no husband, she's a widow, this boy. And her relatives, her neighbors came to stand with her as they could, mourn with her, help her, bury her dead. That's all they could do, stand with her, comfort her, but they could do no further. But God can do something. When no one else can help, God is able to help. The scripture tells us here in verse number 13, And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Weep not. What is compassion? Compassion is not pity. Compassion is to empathize. To have compassion is to be moved in such a way as to do something. To be moved to help. To have compassion is to have a motivating desire to correct the situation. To be in the feet or in the shoes of the person that is suffering. Jesus got into the shoes of this widow woman of Nain and was able to feel and to experience the pain that she was experiencing. And the pain troubled Jesus to a point where he said, I got to do something about it. He felt the pain of the suffering woman. And instead of just saying, Pole, instead of just saying, sorry, instead of just saying, we are standing with you, he said, whip not. Why whip not? Whip not because I'm going to do something about it. Whip not because I'm going to turn the situation around. I say, God has the ability to change situations. I say God has the ability to turn things around when we invite him to be part of the equation. Problems, when we add God to our situations, when we add God to our impossibilities that we face in life, God makes things possible. Because with him, I say with him, all things. Oh, that we would learn.
compassion. Oh, that we would learn compassion. Oh, that we would learn to empathize. Not to sympathize, but to empathize. To get into the shoes of, to feel what the other person is feeling. Because that's exactly what God does. Scripture says, he's touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He's touched by the feeling of our weaknesses. He's touched by the feeling of our pain. Why do people commit suicide? People commit suicide because they cannot see themselves on the other side of the problem. They cannot see this current situation coming to an end. They cannot see light, as we say, at the end of the tunnel. Or the tunnel is too long to have any light on your side. That's why people commit suicide. But I want to say this. You don't have to commit suicide because there is a God in heaven who is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Hebrews what? 4.15. Just give, a, give it to us. For we have not, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. But we have an high priest the kind of high priest that we have is able to be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. He is able not to sympathize, but to empathize. He is able to have compassion on us. He is able to have his mercy reach down to us. When we feel like there is no hope, the God of hope gives us hope. It is that same God that touched Abraham. Scripture tells us who against hope had hope. He believed against all hope. When there was no hope, God gave him the ability to have hope. I want to say there is no hopeless situation in the life of a child of God that has God on their side. Jesus said, stop crying. Stop lamenting. I know you were there when he breathed his last breath. But I can do something about it. This woman had no hope. But Jesus gave her hope. She said, he said, weep not. Verse 14. And he came and did the unthinkable in the day. He touched the coffin. He touched the bear. Now, now scripture in uh, Numbers chapter number 19 Beginning verse number 11 said that uh, if a man touches a dead body or a coffin, this person became unclean for seven days. But he could be cleansed if he purified himself on the third day with uh, pure water, purifying water. And on the seventh day, he purified himself again, then he became pure. But Jesus and he's doing the work of God. He doesn't even have the time to wait for the third day to purify himself. But he was touched by the feeling of the infirmity of this widow. He touched the bear. And when he touched that coffin, the people, the poor bearers, were astounded. They stopped. What has the rabbi done? They stopped. They didn't just stop because he has touched. They touched because what has he done now? How can he make himself unclean? And right there, while they, at the moment when they stopped, Jesus said, young man, hallelujah, I say unto thee, he spoke to a corpse. Jesus spoke to the dead boy. He said, young man, I say unto you, arise, hallelujah. What is that dead situation in your life? Jesus says, arise. He speaks life to dead situations. Jesus is able to breathe life to a dead business or a dying business. Jesus is able to speak life to a dead relationship or a dying marriage. Jesus is able to speak life to that situation that you are in. He's able to breathe life into it. He's able to do it because he has got life within himself. There is no situation God cannot turn around. Jesus touched the coffin. Verse 15, and he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God saying that a great prophet is risen up among us. And that God has visited his people. I want to say God can visit you in your situation. It doesn't matter what you are going through. If only you can invite God into your situation, I say 
God can turn things around. It's not over until you have invited God into it. When you invite God, things become new. When Jesus touched that coffin, this is the message he sent. There is no price I am not willing to pay to help you. I just want us to invite God into our situations today. Don't give up on your children. God can turn their hearts around. When doctors say, we are sorry, there is nothing more we can do. That's okay. Psalm 120 and scripture verse number one says, In my distress, I cried unto the Lord. What happened? And he heard. In your distress, call on God. God will hear. When God hears, he's touched by the feeling of your infirmities. He turns situations around. Shall we pray? Blessed and everlasting Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because Scripture tells us that you are touched by the feeling of our weaknesses. When we call upon you, Lord, you hear. And when you hear, you turn situations around. When we are deeply afraid, we don't know what to do. Lord, we call upon you to come and rescue us. Have compassion on us, Lord. Save us. Because it delights you, Lord, to deliver us on the account of Jesus. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. 